I've had like 12 different hair colors. Oh, <laughs> so where are you from? I am from Seattle, Washington. I grew up under the rain cloud. <laughs> and what was your first break? My first break was, I mean, I grew up doing theater and classical ballet, but my first uh, job here in LA was a show called Bunheads, and it was about ballerinas, and it was super quirky is the term I'd use. <laughs> and what have you been in? Uh, I was in Bunheads, that show. I did a show about Charles Manson, ooh, and cult life in the late 60s, early 70s, which was super fun. And now I'm working on a new X-Men show for Fox and Marvel uh, called The Gifted, where I'm playing Magneto, if you're familiar. Magneto's only birth child, his daughter, named Polaris. And how do you feel about this career? You know, the, the career of, of this industry is so interesting, and, and the career of an actor or actress is, is very specific. It's a lifestyle you really have to choose, and, and you really have to want it because you give up so much. Um, you know, your family, your friends, you're traveling a lot. But it's really fulfilling because you're making stuff that hopefully means something to you and, and might change people's lives, potentially. How did you decide to become an actor? I, I don't know if I ever decided to be an actor. I kind of fell into doing screen work, TV, and movies. But I always loved theater, and I always like knew I wanted to, to be a performer. Um, because I just like love to make people laugh, I guess. I don't know. It's just always been this thing. I'm very much... I need a lot of attention. Let's just say that. <laughs> How would you describe your specialty or type? I don't know if I have a type. I mean, I'd like to think I'm an ingenue, but the truth is probably not. I've played a lot of different characters. I've played... I play from like 15 years old and now I'm playing 29 years old so I've played a whole range of characters in just a few years. So I don't know, I've played like nice girls, like rich, precious angels, and then I've played like badass, refugees, so uh, I don't know. Tall? My type is tall. <laughs> Who's your favorite actor you look up to? I really look up to Melissa Leo just because I never recognize her in any role she's in. Uh, from one movie to the next, I can't tell it's her. Sometimes I'll be halfway through an hour into a film and I'll be like, oh my gosh, that's Melissa Leo. I had no idea. She's just such a chameleon in every way and I think she's such a badass and I just, I love her. What would your ideal job be? My ideal job, you know, honestly, I've always said I wanted to play, I've always said I wanted to play someone who's really fierce, like a really strong woman. Um, who represents things uh, that mean something to me and honestly I'm kind of doing that job right now which is crazy I'm always telling my mom like I don't think I could have written a role better than the role I have right now which is Polaris and you know she she's a soon-to-be mother she suffers from bipolar disorder she's really strong and fierce but also sensitive and I just think that's sort of always what I wanted and, and the show is really cool because it represents like sort of the political climate right now and just like being a minority and what that means and hate crimes and a bigotry. So yeah, I, the, the, the role I have right now is, is the role I've always wanted. Do you consider yourself to be lucky? I am very lucky. I would say, I would say I definitely consider myself lucky. I mean, yeah, I get to go to work every day, do what I love with people I love. And you know, my first job was a job where I got to act and dance, do classical ballet, which are the two, you know, greatest loves of my life. So yeah, I'm super lucky. And I get to be in school right now. I get to study engineering while I'm acting. And you know, I got a lot of opportunities that a lot of people don't have. And I'm super blessed. Would you rather have a car or a diploma? Would I rather have a car or a diploma? Ooh. I'd rather have a diploma. I mean, you can walk anywhere, right? I mean, yeah, they always say, like, what's in your head is what no one can take away from you. So, yeah, I think that's knowledge and education is, like, the most important thing. Especially because in this country, it's so readily available to the general populace. Diploma, for sure. I'd rather have a diploma. What do you think about the need for instant gratification? I think the need for instant gratification, whew, that's a heavy topic. I mean, you know, especially with my generation and, and younger generations, it's just, you know, because of technology, the way it's advancing, it's, it's moving and growing exponentially. People want it now. They want it in their face. They, you know, our attention spans are getting shorter. If you watch TV shows from even 15 years ago, the, the, there are so many fewer commercial breaks. You know, we can watch for longer periods of time because we can stay engaged. And now with like social media and apps and the internet, it's, we want it now, we want it fast. You know, I don't know if that's a bad thing. I think we're sort of just changing with the times and, and we want to feel good when we want to feel good. We want to be entertained when we want to be entertained. So I don't, I don't know, I think there are negative and positives to everything. How do you feel about how interconnected the world is becoming? 
It's kind of crazy how interconnected the world is becoming. I mean, everyone knows everything about everyone, which is really scary sometimes. Um, people can find out everything about you because it's online, on the web, and on social media. People know, people I meet, they know me, they know who my friends are, and I've never met this person before. But I kind of think it's cool. I get to have friends who live in Spain, I have friends who live in, uh, in, in Brazil, I get to talk to fans all over the world because of the way the world is connected now and I think that's so special and so amazing and it gives us opportunities to have friends and learn about cultures that we wouldn't know about before so I say yes I think it's great what does the future look like to you what does the future look like to me the future to me gosh I hope it looks bright I have no idea at this point there's so many there are so many amazing things in this world right now, and specifically in this country, and there are so many awful, awful, horrible things. But I think people are speaking up for themselves, people are using their voices if they're blessed to have a voice, um, and they're using it. So I think, I think the future looks great. I think the future just means that we're able to bring up more, more issues and, 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 and support minorities and support causes that have been like pushed under the rug and, and told to be quiet for so long. So I think the future looks awesome, I hope. How do you feel about having children? How do I feel about having children? The way I feel about having children is thus. Kids are a lot of work. I just got a dog, uh, which is nothing like a human child, but even that's so much, so difficult. And just, you know, being responsible for like forming a human, not only creating a human, I mean, if I adopt, I won't be creating it, but forming their, their life and, and their thoughts and, and their skills and their talents and, and making sure you support them and and figure out who they are and I think the idea of that is so insane and inspiring and amazing and I don't know I, I think I'm really excited to have kids whether I have my own kids or adopt I don't know but you know seeing seeing a human being grow into a full person is probably like the most insane miraculous amazing thing in the world so I think having kids I don't know I'm really excited what challenges do you feel the world is facing today I think the world is facing a lot of challenges today. I think there's a lot of social injustice. I think there's a lot of, you know, hate and, and bigotry and, and horrible things right now. Um, I think we need to represent minority groups a lot better. I mean, in this world, I'm a white girl. I have white privilege and I'm blessed with a voice. I have somewhat of a platform because of the industry I work in. So, you know, I use every opportunity to use my voice for those who have been silenced. And I think that's so, that's so important for people to understand. It's not enough to just think a thought. You know, I always say, if you see someone doing something unjust, if you see someone hurting someone who isn't innocent, like you have to step in, you have to do something. And I'm not saying fight violence with violence, I'm just saying you have to make yourself heard, you have to stand up for people who can't stand up for themselves. That's just, I think that's what has to happen. What are you most grateful for? I'm most grateful, and this is so cheesy, but I'm most grateful for my mom. <laughs> it's so silly, but I just, I, I grew up just with my mom, just her and me, and she is my biggest support system, and she is my everything, and she, you know, I always say growing up, she gave me everything, even when she had nothing, so she just means the world to me. I, I don't know, I'm most grateful for my mom, as silly as it is. I'm sure everyone says that, but it's the truth. What's your favorite way to communicate? My favorite way to communicate, honestly, it's crazy because people are always like, there's like texting and app, apping and <laughs> apping and like direct messaging and, and, and you know, all these things. My favorite thing is just a conversation, sitting in a coffee shop, getting to know someone. There's nothing like the, the adrenaline and vibes and, and connection you get from one-on-one -on -one conversation. You can text someone a thousand times. You still don't know who they are. You still don't get to like feel their energy, feel, you know, have, you have your yourselves like intertwine, I guess whatever. <laughs> What's your favorite book, film, and music right now? My favorite book and my favorite film are probably the same, and they're not really contemporary. I mean, they are technically contemporary, but they're not new. Um, I love the book Fight Club, and I love the film Fight Club. Uh, I've read the book uh, over 20 times. It's crazy. I could probably perform it right now if I had to. Um, yeah, I love those. But my favorite, like, current film... Oh, oh, well, I really want to see Lady Bird. I haven't seen it, so it's not my favorite. But I, I hear it's really good, and it's about, like, a young girl growing up. So I really want to see that, and I love Saoirse Ronan. Um, my favorite music I'm listening to right now... Oh, let me think. Again, not contemporary music. I'm listening to a lot of uh, the presidents of the United States. Uh, they're a band I, I used to listen to. I used to go see with my mom in Seattle when I grew up. They would, like, come and perform at our block parties and stuff. So I'm listening to them a lot. Nothing cool, though. <laughs>